So the contents of the uh, in the unit three and four in your core course two paper are parts of a subject named linear algebra. In layman's terms, this subject handles things with matrices. Probably you remember while interviewing you during the admission process, I asked you the question of simplifying the rules of matrix multiplication. Indeed, they are designed in a weird way, and we will learn in this course why is that the case. But before that exploration, I want you to realize that it's okay and always welcome to ask questions about anything you see and encounter. Many of you hadn't even thought of actually asking the question uh, that why that weird rule is there for matrix multiplication. Uh, why don't we multiply in a much easier way, like we add them? It is tremendously important to ask these questions. Now, when you are going to dive into proper academics, get these questions burning up in you. And please feel free to utter them loud. No question is a silly question. Trust me, you do not have the maturity to judge whether a question is silly or good. So don't hold up any, just ask them out loud. For your information, in this course, we are going to prove that zero times something is zero or minus one times something is negative of that. Such will be our level of in investigation before accepting anything. And as, as always, as the uh, thumb rule in my class, do not nod your head unless you are convinced with my arguments. This is the most basic level of cooperation I expect from all of you, uh, uh, more, more so in this virtual mode of uh, learning. With this premise, let us start with the basic course on linear algebra. Uh, we start with motivation. Now, this following discussion, what you will see in this slide, in the following slide, is mostly motivated from this book uh, by Ornok Chakraborty, uh, Linear Algebra. This book is a bilingual book. This, and the second book, what we will be uh, referring to is this by S.K. Mapa, Higher Algebra, Abstract and Linear. Also, I want to uh, comment on another thing that at this level, uh, you are supposed to go through different books. Apart from the suggested textbook, you are supposed to go through different books by yourself. You can choose any book you want. Okay, the standardized textbooks, they come in uh, uh, from different authors, but they cover the uh, same syllabus. So, you, uh, you uh, go through different books and pick the book which you find comfortable reading. Okay, it is no hard and fast rule that you have to go through MAPA. You can go through Huffman Coons. You can go through, uh, the, there is a book by Dean Shankaram Rao. You can go through these books, uh, but uh, you, uh, I mean, go through them and you pick your own book for, for your, your satisfaction. It completely depends on how comfortable you find yourself with a given book. It does not matter whether the teacher is referring something as a textbook, so you keep that book as a, as a reference thing, but you can take another, you can choose another book as your uh, main source of uh, knowledge. Okay, you do not have to go by the teacher. And um, uh, also, also, you can have different books consulted for different chapters even. Okay, so all these things are new, uh, completely new to you, but these things are very much normal in the undergraduate studies. I mean, from, in the studies from now on. You may find a particular chapter good in this book and another chapter good in another book. You have every liberty to switch between books uh, as long as you get the uh, synchronization properly. Linear algebra has three major characteristics. Number one, it has got rich, very rich history. Number two, it has got numerous applications, numerous. Number three, it is hugely formalized. I'll explain everything, what, what do I mean by this? Thing. First, let us uh, talk about rich history of this subject. Now, uh, you have seen this kind of, kind of system of linear equations by now, isn't it? So this 3x plus 2y plus z equal to 39, uh, 2x plus 3y plus z equals to 34, x plus 2y plus 3z equals to 26. Now, if we want to go to the uh, historic um, uh, timeline, this was first found in a Chinese literature, which dates back to 200 BC, before Christ. Okay, this uh, question was in context of distributing agricultural crops into bundles. 
so the, the linear algebra what we now i mean at that at that time nobody even uh, thought of linear or algebra uh, or uh, things like that but people actually uh, um, solved this kind of problems in 200 before christ the german mathematician eisenstein not einstein eisenstein discovered the non commutativity of matrix multiplication in the year 1844 Okay, so you, you understand that 2044 years a gap is there. So this, uh, this uh, subject is uh, being studied, studied from uh, that prehistoric age and till, till now. I mean, the, the, you, you know this one, this, the matrix multiplication is not commutative. AB is not same as BA. Okay, so that thing was discovered in the year 1844 only, so recently. And... Uh, so now you can uh, realize that how broad, uh, how in, in, in what a broad time this subject has been discovered, and this is by Chinese people, and this is by a German mathematician. Uh, another comment I want to make over here that do not think that uh, all these things what you are studying now that existed for favor. No. Those things were discovered by people. There is a process of establishing things. There is a process of discovering things. There is a process which is based on common sense. And common sense never says that um, to multiply matrices in that weird way. No. Common sense always says that multiply matrices in, in, the, uh, in the way we uh, add them. So there must be something more, a, a reason to uh, to go for a more sophisticated sense to make out a more sophisticated sense of things what we are doing okay so do not take everything what is written in the book as in from bible nobody can uh, question that no you have those things were uh, discovered were invented were established by people and there is a thought process behind that your uh, in this course we will be uh, very much interested in that thought process as well so that we understand that what leads to which thing. And in that way, we, you will also learn that how to think about a new theory. When you are learning something, what are the questions you should be asking? So that is the motivation or the, that is the objective of our uh, course. Okay, so please feel free to ask questions, any questions right now. Do not judge whether they are silly or good. As the course goes on, as your um, this entire um, your stay in the college goes on, you your questions will automatically be refined. Uh, we are trying to think about the thought process, like like a determinant. A determinant, a weird uh, definition of determinant. Why do people need that? Now you will know that people will uh, need that for volume and area and blah and blah and blah. But I mean, uh, how could people even thought of this would be the thing for the area or volume? And that weird thing, the same thing is being used for uh, invertible matrices or, and uh, other things. So those uh, things, these, these concepts, they occurred to human beings for, un, uh, I mean, with going with some particular thought process. So we are, we need to explore that as well. Okay. Am I clear on this? So people have been doing uh, since 200 BC to 1844, all these works, um, uh, the Chinese are doing this one by for agricultural crop distribution problem. Uh, this person is doing it for uh, some another context. So nobody is doing linear algebra knowingly. Nobody knows what the term linear algebra knowingly. Uh, knows, knows the term linear algebra. They are doing it for their own sake of research, for their own sake of problems. So that is why this one, this particular subject, linear algebra, has got a very wide history. People have used this one for different uh, purposes, for to solve different problems. And so that is why it is extremely uh, scattered. The entire development of uh, topics in linear algebra are extremely scattered and there is no hierarchy as well. Okay, so that problem we will discuss in a, later, in a bit later. Now, numerous applications. This subject, particular subject has been developed through applications. Different mathematicians, different scientists have used this uh, techniques from linear algebra uh, techniques of, of, of the same kind in their own problems. Okay, so Chinese use this one to sort their crops into bundles. 
Einstein, Albert Einstein used this in his relativity theory. Uh, German mathematician Gauss, Carl Friedrich Gauss, used this in his research in astronomy. Actually, he discovered a technique for solving system of linear equations, which was already discovered by the Chinese in that ancient literature, what we saw uh, there in the last slide. Of course, Gauss did not know about that. The particular technique of solving these linear equations is today known as Gaussian elimination. So the same technique is used for agricultural crop distribution and in astronomy. So you think of the range we are talking about here. Gauss also, also Gauss used linear algebra uh, to identify a conic, say, conic section or a surface from a given general equation of second degree. For example, which, which surface does this equation uh, represent? Is it a cone? Is it a ellipsoid? Is it a paraboloid? Hyperboloid? Sphere? Plane? What is this? So, Gauss used linear algebra, okay, I mean, the, 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 some techniques which are, are later included in linear algebra uh, used techniques to identify conic or surface from a generalized uh, general equation of second degree. Linear algebra is used in algorithm of Google search. Linear algebra is used by Facebook to find your number of frames or mutual sense. We'll see this thing later, how, is, how Facebook does this. Linear algebra is used in engineering of all sorts. So it has got numerous applications. Now, hugely formalized, what do I mean? We will study here a much formalized and standardized version of the subject. Okay, what do I mean? This means that people are applying the techniques from the same area without realizing uh, for their own research. Like Chinese people, they did the uh, techniques from the same area in, in 200 BC for their agricultural prop distribution problem. Gauss in, uh, did the same thing, used the same thing in uh, astronomical problem. So Einstein did this one for his relativity theory. So this thing, if many uh, scientists are using this one for their own research uh, in different contexts, they are not, not intentionally doing linear algebra but they are using techniques of same kind to solve their problem so that is why uh, the everything is a is a complete hotspot okay because nobody has systematized the thing so here we will study a formalized and standardized version of the subject let me say a pro and con about this practice pro a systematic approach easy to teach and learn Okay, you will be able to learn it properly because uh, you do not have to start from the astronomical thing to understand what is some system of linear equations. Or uh, you do not have to learn the computer science behind the algorithm, Google algorithm, for to learn the that thing needed over there. Okay, so this is a very much systematic approach what we learn uh, today, and that is why it is very easy to teach and learn. Con is the motivation is often lost. Why does a weird quantity like determinant even arise in the picture? What did lead people to discover the rules of matrix multiplication? These uh, motivations are often lost. A fun fact, determinants came before matrices. Can you imagine that? So when people saw that all these techniques um, were, which are used in so many different places can be brought under one umbrella subject, they did that. And then this uh, the term linear algebra was given to that systematic study of those techniques. 